wet. Last time in the States for a long time. A little bit of a rainy day, so we were hoping to get one more goodbye on the beach, but the weather is not really cooperating for that. So I'm just uh, getting a dinghy red motor ready to come off the boat. Um, doesn't look like a crazy forecast, but we figure it's more conservative to take the motor off at least. So working on that. Got our little crane here we're gonna use. I'm just trying to get the security cables off now. Today may be gloomy, but our last few days in the dry Tortugas were not. We enjoyed a lovely and sunny sail here from Key West, which you saw last time. We made the trip up there to provision and fuel up in anticipation of our next passage, which will be to Mexico. Since then, we've been waiting for the right weather, and in the meantime, crossing the last to-dos off our Dry Tortugas wish list, beginning with tracking down an infamous giant Goliath grouper. We'd heard stories that this tremendous fish, several hundred pounds in size, could be seen hanging around a nearby dive site with a shipwreck. And on a day we'd decided to take Delos closer to this site as a group to explore, our curiosities were satisfied when Bill, Kaza, and Brian went for an early morning scuba dive while I stayed back to watch Nugget. The wreck we're diving is called the Windjammer and has been identified as the Norwegian Avanti, which sank on January 22nd, 1907, while en route to Uruguay from Pensacola, Florida. The events of the wreck remain unknown, and today the vessel lies in two large pieces, each about 110 feet in length. And not only do we have this amazing wreck and sea life to explore, but if we spot that Goliath grouper, that will be the icing on the cake. that everyone's seen this thing except me, I'm really hoping the grouper hasn't traveled too far when it's my turn to dive. In addition to this particular Goliath grouper, we've also heard tales of the same breed hanging around the anchorage. And since we've been in the dry tortugas, I've been totally consumed with the desire to find one of these ginormous creatures. Oh! <laughs> 
I was actually really freaked out by this guy, which is why I grabbed Bill's arm. But so thrilled that I finally got to see him. Hey, you saw it! It was terrifying. What? It was amazing. <laughs> when I first saw him, I was like, this is like, oh my god. <laughs> this thing could eat me. <laughs> Well, we've got done a good day of diving. I think it's time for a beer. Cerveza, por favor. That's right. Oh, look at it. Get it. I almost forgot to tell you, there's a new addition to our little group. This is Taylor, and she's joined Delos to help out with the upcoming voyage to Mexico. So you'll be seeing much more of this incredible human down the line. Pop the safety on here in case something happens to the crane. It's still attached. Really a two-person job, but I'm uh, filming. <laughs> yeah, we usually do it together, but what we do for the film. Ratchet strap. This is the long one. Yep. So we're not expecting any kind of crazy weather on this passage, uh, but this is just like practice that we kind of always do whenever we're going to go offshore. Um, generally, we do. Um, yeah, if not always, take uh, the engine off the dinghy. Um, so it has, you know, it just reduces the weight and therefore like the movement that's happening um, on the davits. It's also easier for straps, right? If, like the motors have to weight of this thing. If we, it's a lot easier to get the straps tightened down, less motion on the davits if the engine is off. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So yeah, part of our passage prep. Which we've been slowly taking care of today. Yep. It rained quite a bit. Water. Hmm. It was really heavy. Lucky with this sunset, huh? Yeah, I know. I kind of wish I didn't strap a dinghy up so we could like go to the beach one more time. Hey, Good last night. The dry tortillas. I've had this well being in the states for a long time. Yeah, I know. Possibly ever. Mexico. Mexico, Panama. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. They don't look so pretty, but they're pretty good. Pretty tasty. We have a little salad to go with. Huh? <laughs> We've seen about 15 knots right behind us, so not that good. Make some good speeds. And there's Yula Maharis. Putting in our waypoint. Go to cursor. Okay, 293 miles to go. <laughs> Get this trip started. Okay. 
So, looking at the weather, looks like we're still pretty good to go. Um, so this passage actually has two Gulfstream crossings, which is kind of interesting for navigation. We're going to have one um, almost immediately, uh, once we, the Gulfstream runs a little bit south of us. So you can see this is the Gulfstream, making kind of a big curve into the Gulf of Mexico and then out and around. So we're somewhere off here, so we have to cross it immediately. Uh, then we sail along the coast of Cuba, which is this landmass here. And then we cross it here again to get to Ilo Mujeres. So if we cross it here, right along shore, supposedly it's supposed to be some like southerly flowing uh, that we could like go in instead of having to fight it. So the idea with the tactic here, and so we're actually just doing the rum line across, really. We're doing the rum line, but with the, the tactic with the Gulf Stream is to just get you know it. get in and out. Um, I mean, yeah, and we are doing the rum line. If we were pretty, I guess we could dip a little south here, ride that eddy. There's like going to be three phases of this trip, um, and I'll explain our sail configura for, configuration for each. Um, we're starting off in a northeast wind, blowing in the teens, um, which is basically dead down wind for our, our rum line here. So we're going to be pulled out Genoa and a code zero, uh, because 16 knots by the time we get going, five, six, seven knots, is only actually nine knots over the deck. So we could use a big air sail like a code zero. Um, as we get off the coast of Cuba, a wind shadow develops right here. Um, it seems to be maybe some mountains, it always seems to be a little bit of a gap off Cuba here. Um, so we're going to be motoring for a period of 12 to 24 hours. Um, and you can see the wind is clocked from northeast to more easterly. Um, and then by the time we come out of the shadow, it's slightly south of east now, right? Here it comes, uh, southeast. <clears throat> um, and that'll be now beam reaching, so the pole will come down, the code zero will come in, and we'll probably be a reefed main and a Genoa running at about 13, 14 knots on the beam, um, up to 15 or 16 even. And that'll be less rolly, but more healing, whereas the first leg will be more rolly, <laughs> but no healing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so we're kinda, I'm kind of looking at at least in three phases, even though, the wind angles are pretty similar in one and three. It's basically well, some, some yeah. type of easterly wind, no wind, some kind of yeah, so it's easterly northeast, wind. Yeah, so northeast, no wind, southeast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then we're just hoping that we can sail uh, more of that dead area than the models predict. Than we think, because we, we were starting well. to believe that. Bless <laughs> 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 you. COVID. <laughs> You're allergic to this trip. No, um, it's going to be good. Uh, we're starting to believe that the wind hole we're seeing has something to do with those mountains in Cuba, um, and not necessarily. But there's, we'll, wind, there's wind north and south of it. But, yeah. but we'll, we'll let you guys know, because we'll, we're going to we'll go do out. it, and we'll find out. Should I go put the code zero up? Yeah. And get ready while we're at anchor, it's easier. Yeah.
Yeah. Give me some margaritas and tacos. Here we go. Vamos. Vamos. Vamos, muchacha. So we just turned onto our heading, 292 miles ago. Wind's about 140 apparent, blowing at 11 over the deck right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the code zero out, stabilize the boat. Um, yeah, we're on heading, nothing in our way now, just open water. Yeah, here we go. Join us next time for our 300 mile offshore passage to Mexico which, as any offshore passage is, full of adventure and surprises. Oh no! Some good, some less than ideal. I got it! Here! Here, Bird! Here! Oh, and by the way, we did end up spotting one of those giant goliath groupers in the anchorage, so it turns out that it wasn't just a fishtail. And I, in particular, was pretty excited about it. 